Yelling at someone and saying, get in a calorie deficit is about as helpful as an upside down umbrella. While yes, its job is to catch a few raindrops, it doesn't really do much help when the foundation isn't there. <laughs> If fat loss is your goal, let's look at four foods that you better be consuming in order to make sure that you stay in a calorie deficit. First and foremost, let's look at what a calorie deficit is. We know that it means taking in less calories than we are burning or expending. To understand that better, we first need to understand TDEE, -E, your total daily energy expenditure. A majority of our calories are actually not burned from exercise which might be news to you, but if you look at this graph here, you'll understand that a majority of our calories are actually just burned as our basal metabolic rate, our BMR. Literally, you would burn them in a coma. That's one of the reasons why I think it's extremely toxic when people look at something and go, oh, I have a McDonald's medium fries. How many stairs do I need to climb up to burn these fries off? It's extremely toxic and completely unnecessary. If you burn that many calories worth from exercise, you're actually burning significantly more total calories thanks to everything else shown here. Another thing we want to consider when looking at a calorie deficit is we don't want to be hungry. The moment we're hungry, we're going to tend to make terrible decisions around our nutrition and it could lead to something like binge eating. We binge because we have not been giving our body enough fuel. That means if we are constantly starving ourselves and constantly feeling the temptation to binge, something along the line is not going the way we want it to. That might mean that we are going into an extreme calorie deficit, maybe 1200 calories for three or four days. And then all of a sudden on that fifth day, we just jump out of it and we need to binge eat on that entire bag of m and or that entire box of donuts. Whatever it is, we have zero self-control. And that normally comes from a severe drop in calories or a very restrictive diet. So in order to get into a calorie deficit and make the best possible results while we're there and try to make it as sustainable as possible, we want to make sure that we are satiated and that we are not being overly restrictive to the foods that we enjoy. So now that we know all those things, let's look at food that won't make us feel restrictive in dropping our calories and trying to lose that stubborn fat. Now, coming in with the first one, it should be quite obvious that we want to go for foods that are higher in protein, specifically animal protein foods. These are things like fish, steaks, chicken, etc. Foods that are higher in protein are typically found to be significantly more satiating. And for that reason, we should try to make sure that a solid amount of our diet comes from foods that are high in protein, more specifically animal proteins. While satiety is something that we definitely want to make sure that we achieve, it's very subjective. Again, we want to feel satiated and we want to feel like we're not overly restrictive or losing anything in our diet. These foods are going to help you make sure you feel like you're not over restricting your calories or over restricting the amount of foods that you can consume. Coming in at number two, we've got fruits, most specifically apples and oranges. When we look at something called the satiety index, apples and oranges come in at the top of the satiety index where it shows that after consuming apples and oranges, feel that they are significantly more satiated and and are less likely to overindulge or overconsume in their calories. It's one thing to eat less calories. We could do that by eating 1200 calories too. However, if we end up going into a binge, well then what have we learned? What we wanna make sure we do is on top of consuming less calories is also making sure that we don't overindulge in the future by making sure if we have a sweet tooth that we're hitting that sweet tooth with a variety of fruits, veggies, and other low calorie foods to help us silence that sweet tooth and make sure that we stay on our calorie target. Conveniently, the next foods that we want to consume are also high in protein. Third on our list of foods we want to make sure that we're consuming are plant-based proteins. So things like legumes, beans, seeds, nuts, all of these types of things are very high in protein for the most part and also are quite satiating. For that reason and the fact that these foods add a lot of volume to our meals, they'll definitely keep us fuller for a longer period of time and keep us more satisfied with our diet. The last thing we want to do is feel like we have to limit the amount of food that we're consuming just because we're on a diet. Anecdotally speaking, in my experience, that's where a lot of diets fail.
If you want to make sure that you are in a calorie deficit and not regaining that weight in the future, the top of our list, foods you cannot miss, and this might be quite shocking for some of you, are carbs, carbohydrates. More specifically, oats and potatoes. Coming in at the very top spot of our list for satiety index, boiled potatoes. These foods, on top of making you feel very satiated, will also reduce the feeling of restriction, making it much easier to stick to a diet when you can eat the foods that you enjoy. If you're able to consistently consume all four types of these foods, you will definitely see success. To make sure you're no longer guessing and maximize your nutrition day in and day out, make sure you hit that follow button, subscribe on YouTube if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next one.